Hi, Cam Steve for this week's Boat Test Reports. Thanks for being with us today. Our show this week is sponsored by Yamaha Boats and Wave Runners. With 24 boat models to choose from and 18 Wave Runners, Yamaha revs your heart. Let's start right in with the news. Maryland's Governor Larry Hogan announced that as of May 7th at 7 a.m., the list of safe outdoor activities will be broadened to now include boating and fishing. Social distancing guidelines must still be adhered to, and this now means that all 50 states are open to boating and will remain so as long as we all play by the rules. In Miami, there was much relief as marinas and ramps opened up again, but that feeling was short-lived. Boaters lined up at ramps as much as two hours before opening, and within hours of opening, they were shut down again as they were at capacity. For things that make you shake your head, the Coast Guard rescued two kayakers last Friday when they became stranded after paddling in the waters off Juneau, Alaska. While rescued with no injuries, they had no life jackets, no exposure suits, no food, and no water. Petty Officer 2nd Class Theodore Bach from Station Juno stated that they were lucky enough to have enough cell phone battery left to call for help. This represents in vivid detail the need for preparation everywhere, certainly more so in waters where the average temperature is frigid and the air temps drop into the 30s. And lastly, get this, a 72-year-old UK man has completed a solo transatlantic rowing trip in 96 days. Graham Walters set off from the Spanish island of Gran Canaria on January 25th and arrived in Antigua on April 29th, achieving three world records. The oldest person to row across the Atlantic solo, the oldest person to row across any ocean solo, and the oldest person to row across the same ocean multiple times, this being his fifth journey, three of which were solo. This time, however, no hugs, no pats on the back upon his arrival. He left before COVID-19 struck and came home to a world vastly changed. Now, boats aren't all created equal. Some excel in areas, others not so much. So here's a little bit of info to help you make a more informed decision with five things you must know. This week's topic, visibility from the helm. Visibility from the helm from both seated and standing positions have strict standards. From the seated position, there must be unobstructed, clear, horizontal vision from 27 inches off the seat to 33 inches above the seat. In a standing position, the requirements go from a low eye position of 58 inches off the deck to a high eye position of 68 inches off the deck. These standards are obviously for express cruisers and larger vessels. You need to be able to see straight ahead from a minimum of four boat lengths in front of you or 164 feet. That's why you'll see some decks curving down a bit to improve visibility. You need to see through an arc of at least 30 degrees ahead. That's why some of the boats with larger window mullions still are compliant. There's an exception to these rules for when the boat is coming up on plane. Occasionally, there's a high trim angle when the boat accelerates. So when you watch our test, you might hear me say she accelerates at a level attitude or no disruption of forward visibility. And the regs state that only one helm needs to be in compliance mostly because the Flybridge helm usually has little to no obstructions anyway. Yamaha has been stepping up and offering some interesting promotions to their watercraft lineup. To tell us more about those is Yamaha General Manager Brian Setti. Brian, thanks for being with us today. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Tell us about the promotions you've got going on at Yamaha. So for the month of May, we know that uh, some folks might be a little strapped. So we introduced a 000 for 180 days on our boat. So it's basically zero down, zero interest, and zero payments for six months. And on our Wave Runner line, we've got zero, zero, zero for 90 days, plus a $500 incentive, or you can get a, a yes contract. We're trying to help stimulate uh, some retail activity for our dealers, create some traffic at the dealer level, as well as to our website where we can provide leads to our dealer network. Fortunately, we're all in an industry that seems tailor-made for social distancing. Have you seen an uptick in interest in Yamaha boats? The interest online, uh, number one, has been about 50% up versus uh, last year for the month of April. So really taking a look at the entire month. On our boat line, we are on par or a little bit better in retail sales versus the prior year uh, for the month of April. And in personal watercraft, I think we were the mid 80s to high 80% versus the prior year. Obviously, your dealers must have changed the way they're conducting business during the quarantine. They had to reinvent themselves, no doubt about it. They're doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one activity. Uh, they've been scheduling appointments uh, at their dealerships. 
They've been uh, doing sales and delivering product directly to the customer's house or the marina, whatever they wanted to do. Very focused on service. And, you know, as we're entering the spring season, this is service season. So they've been allowing consumers to just bring their unit, drop it off at, their, at the dealership, or the dealership will go and get the unit, service it, and return it. So basically almost non-touch service there. What are your plans for getting the factory operating again? So our factories uh, got online on May 4th. So both the, uh, the Wave Runner factory down in Noonan, Georgia at YMMC and our boat factory up uh, outside of Knoxville, Tennessee, YJBM. On May 4th, they got up and running. They're fully, uh, fully staffed. They're ramping up production. We're going to, you know, probably after the first week, we'll see our first production load. Obviously, we, uh, to get to full production and have the staff in there, we've done a lot from the standpoint of following the CDC guidelines to make sure that people are wearing the, uh, the PPE. We've got masks, checking their temperatures when they arrive, and also creating those areas around, you know, the, the lunch rooms and the meal times that there was more spacing. And then, of course, more cleaning. We're doing a lot more cleaning, environmental cleaning at the factory as well to make sure it's consistently uh, up to standard. We want to make sure they're safe, the environment is clean and healthy for them so they can come to work and we can get things as close to back to normal uh, as we can. So for more information, go to YamahaBoats.com. Brian, thanks again so much for being with us. It's a pleasure having you. My pleasure. Appreciate all your support. Now, in case you missed it, here's a couple of clips from some of the many boats we've tested recently. First up is a cruising catamaran with long legs and a boatload of upgrades. It's the Leopard 53 Powercat. And look at this, six feet, 10 inches of overhead clearance. The galley is now positioned aft and it's much more functional. Because this is a catamaran, room is everywhere. Across, look at this, a full-size refrigerator with water and ice in the door. And notice over on the sides, air conditioning vents are up high so the whole room cools down evenly. Now moving to the salon area, opposing seating, L-shaped couch over on the port hand side, two-person love seat over on the starboard side, we tested in less than ideal conditions with seas running three to five feet, so these will be real world numbers. With the twin 370 horsepower Yanmars run up to 3740 RPM, our speed topped out at 22.3 knots. And next is a new and enhanced version from the MC lineup from Beneteau, it's Monte Carlo's MC52. There are certainly multiple gathering areas of this flying bridge and it's huge taking up almost 70-80% of the boat's entire length. Now directly across is a full-length sofa and all this is under the protection of the hardtop six feet eight inches off the deck and notice that includes an electrically actuated opening sunroof. We access the interior by opening up the sliding glass doors to a full four feet five inches. Inside the average headroom is six feet five inches and look at this open and airy environment. As we make our way down below on the Monte Carlo 52, notice that we still have the atrium style of entry to the lower decks, but this time it goes off into two different directions, forward being for the VIP and the guest, aft being for the master. In front of the dock, I went down to the cockpit station, rotated stern two, and headed in. It's here where I really put the joystick through its paces, and to no one's surprise, it was dialed in perfectly, allowing exacting precision, even with a crosswind and cross current. It's just an easy and forgiving boat to operate in close quarters. Now for our viewer questions, here's a couple of interesting ones. First, do manufacturers and or brokers discount their boats from sticker price? And if so, what would be a good target percentage discount for a $3 million purchase? Well, I queried several of the builders and they all pretty much are on the same page regarding these answers. If we're talking about a small bow rider, dealer markups range from about 12% to as much as 35%, depending on the brand, model, and the dealer. Everybody still has to stay in business, so even with a larger markup, there's not much wiggle room. Now, for a $3 million yacht, there's even less markup. The issue being, no two yachts are the same at this level, so each one gets more levels of customization than others. Couple that with various requirements between U.S. and Europe, and things get even more complex. Then there are the tariffs. Yachts by their very nature are expensive to build and all parties involved, including the builder and the dealer, are trying to keep the price as low as possible at the intended level of quality and still stay in business. In most cases, the price being asked is a fair one. So no, there's not really much wiggle room with most larger yachts. 
That said, if you wanted to buy a boat that was built on spec and is sitting at the yard waiting for an owner, then you do have some bargaining room. Just don't expect it to be half of the asking price. Our experience is that people who are hell-bent on getting a really good deal usually end up getting a good deal less. So watch out for the great deals. And second, I live overseas in Europe but plan on taking delivery of the boat in the U.S. and eventually bringing it to the Med some 6 to 12 months later. I've started to look at various flag options. Do you have any recommendations for a global advisor or flag broker that can assist in making this decision? Well, my advice to you in this case is to walk down a row of mega yachts and you will see a lot of boats flagged in former British colonies, which are called the Red Flags. You will also see the flags from the Marshall Islands, Malta, Guernsey, and a few other places, so clearly there's no best flag for everyone. There are different tax consequences, reporting procedures, and laws in each jurisdiction. You should talk to your accountant and a good flag lawyer to get your best answer for a specific case. A good broker or dealer can lead you in the right direction. Now we continue with one of our more popular segments, questions from the captain's exam. Let's see if you are a super captain. We'll start with rules of the road. When power driven vessels are in sight of one another, passing signals shall be sounded when A. Meeting or crossing within half a mile of each other. B. Meeting within one mile of each other. C. Meeting or crossing at any distance. Or D. Crossing within one mile of each other. The correct answer is A. When power-driven vessels are in sight of one another and meeting or crossing at a distance within a half a mile of each other, each vessel underway, when maneuvering, shall indicate that maneuver by the following signals on her whistle. One short blast to mean I intend to leave you on my port side. Two short blasts mean I intend to leave you on my starboard side. And three short blasts mean I am operating a stern propulsion. Now for deck safety, you're standing wheel watch when you hear the cry, man overboard, starboard side. You should immediately A, give full left rudder, B, give full right rudder, C, put the rudder amidships, or D, throw a life ring to mark the spot. Well, the correct answer is B, give full right rudder. The boat steers by pushing the stern around. If our guy falls on the starboard side and you try to turn to port to avoid him, what really happens? The stern goes to starboard, possibly right into our man overboard. Turn into the side he fell on and you push the stern away and it's spinning parts from the victim. Did you guess D, throw a life ring to mark the spot? That's not the job of the wheel watch. The person yelling man overboard should be doing that and continually pointing at the guy in the water, never taking his eyes off of him until the helm has him made. And in the cool new products department is this. The Rescue Link from ACR Electronics. It's a clever, buoyant, personal locator beacon that not only requires no subscription, a digital display provides live status and GPS coordinates. A built-in strobe and infrared strobe further assist in the rescue. All it takes to activate it is to simply open up the antenna, press the on button for two seconds. That's it, and then rescue is on its way. For more information, you can go to boattest.com, look under products and services and find more about the rescue link. Well, that's our show for this week. As always, keep those questions coming, stay safe, practice social distancing, and thanks for watching. And remember to keep your family involved in your boating experiences. This means you shouldn't be Captain Bly and yell at the kids for not tying up a line properly. Instead, teach them and let them take the wheel under your supervision. The best way to teach responsibility is to give responsibility. Soon, Everyone in the family will be a competent member of the crew, and who knows, maybe the kids will be able to take the boat out alone from time to time, or even become a boat test captain. It all depends on your ability to teach instead of command. As always, I'm Captain Steve, and I'll see you on the water. <music>